good and happy Monday morning viewers. Welcome to yet another edition of KTN's Books and Blogs. Um, today we are discussing our friend Peter Kimani's Dance of the Jacarande. This is a much awarded book. It just came out last year, but it's already making a, shall I say, transatlantic ripples. Uh -huh. And today I'm here with uh, my friend and a fellow panelist, um, Shiko Kimani Mwaniki, um, who's the author of both Nairobi Cocktail and Immigrant Cocktail. Yeah. Um, our other guest is Anja, Anja B. Uh, she's a journalist and she also is a very big book person. I, I would say she's a bibliophile. She loves books and uh, she hosts a monthly book reading at the Goethe Institute. So Anja, uh, very welcome you, uh, both to KTN and to the Books and Blogs show. Yes. So let's get straight into it. Yes. Um, Peter Kimani um, has been like, he was a journalist, eh? just like us before this. Before he went to America and then he's come back and he's working at the Aga Khan, Aga Khan uh, University. That's where he's teaching journalism currently. Mm -hmm. And you can see a lot of these skills in his uh, pretty good book, Dance of the Jacaranda, which even Gugi Wasiongo described as, you know, poetically written, because Peter is also a poet. So I'll start with your generals. This is not the year session of the interview yet, but I'll start with your general impressions of Dance of the Jacaranda. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm just sad that it's not, uh, he wasn't published by a Kenyan. I think that's a bit sad, especially because it's amazing work. And I have to wonder why, actually. I'd like to know why. Was it his choice or uh, did he, like the rest of us, get frustrated by publishers? Uh, sorry, publishers, but I have to say that. But yeah, I think it's, it, it's amazing. It, uh, he manages to put history to paint it so well that it looks really, you feel like you're living in those times. So yeah, I think it's I think it's a beautiful book. I totally agree. And that uh, even though I'm a very picky reader, for me, if I like a book, um, for me to like a book, it has to be a compelling story and it has to be beautifully written. And this book has both. It's um, perceptive, it's uh, funny, it's witty, it's something that you don't want to put down, and it is full of suspense. And only at the, almost at the very end, you will find out what all, when all the threads come together, so to say. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay. Wow, that's a very ringing endorsement. Let's end the show <laughs> right there. Ah. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> no. uh, Shiko, th this book was not published. Uh, it's not that Peter Kimani got frustrated. I know you want to identify mm -hmm. with the, mm -hmm. uh, to bash the <laughs> local publishers, <laughs> but I think people. he made a deliberate choice mm -hmm. because he even has got an agent who's like a, like a black American uh, woman, uh, who, and they decided to do it outside. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe there's a criticism in that, yeah, that, that a book like this has to be published. Uh, like, do you think there are writers who find more validity in publishing their books outside, they are sort of like won't even give the local market a chance. We'll start outside and then we'll be validated by the West and then bring the book back home. I don't have a direct answer to that, but I do wonder because uh, we've got writers here who've been published locally and they're making waves out there. Uh, yeah. Like Kenyanjui Kombani. Okay. Yeah, Kombani is, is, is a good example. Um, <laughs> now I'm gonna sound a bit personal, but I think uh, if I had a choice between a foreign publisher and a local one, having experienced the local ones, of course, I think I'd try with the foreign publishers. When you say foreign, do you mean Western? Well, because if it's being published in Chad. Yeah. Well, I don't think they yeah. do or much Senegal. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah, I think I, I mean Western. I, I mean Western. Yes. Um, so you mean Mzungus? Mzungu not necessarily, no. I don't think it has anything to do with the Mzungu. Yes. I just think it's the Western part of handling things that I would okay. go for. Okay. Mm. And, Anja, you like this book so much, unless you wanted to add something to that. Yeah, I wanted to uh, add okay. something to that. Yes. I think I have half of an answer to your question, yes. Yes. even though it's second hand. Um, I read a story by Alphonse Yondu, who wrote it for the nation, even though I know he used to work for this network. Um, he wrote it in May um, when he was attending Kimani's book launch in London. And obviously Kimani must have told him that um, he sent out the manuscript to a Kenyan publisher and to one in the US. To one Kenyan publisher? Yes, he didn't, the, the article didn't name the publisher. Yes. So okay. he got a response after three weeks from the American publishers. And three, two years down the line, there was no answer from the Kenyan one. So I think both Chico and me, we are probably the wrong people to ask why it has not been published. I think the Kenyan publishing scene should give the answer. <laughs> but uh, this is not a new phenomenon. I mean, many Kenyan authors had to seek publishing opportunities elsewhere. But I, I think it's great that publishing houses in Africa have been coming up. So far, mainly in Nigeria. Parisia, um, uh, Kassara. No, we'll talk about Nigerians today. But Zuki yes. Rawana yes. has also yes. launched her uh, publishing company recently. Um, I think this is a great sign. So, okay. yeah. He's okay. hoping I haven't got much faith in them, unfortunately. Yeah, well, Nigerian. No, no, yes. no, no, no. African oh, publishers. Oh, okay. Kenyan. Well, there, Kenyan. there you Let go. Me not You're do just the general thing. Publishers. Kenyan publishers. Now, let's yeah. talk about something uh, that I found a bit disturbing mm. myself mm. in this book because it's a very well written book. You, you, you've said good things. So let's talk about something. Peter Kimani is a Kikuyu guy, well, of course, mm -hmm. Peter Kimani. Mm. And he's written a very good story. But I noticed in it that the African characters, it's almost written like in a very white way. Only in this sense, he's got it, it, it in the sense that the main characters first are Indians. Yeah? Yes, they are part of Kenyans, they are the 44th tribe. I think the president made them 44th tribe the other day. They've been here for over a century, just like our Mzungus. But... I haven't given us a tribe yet. Yes, yeah, you'll get one uh, with the next... <laughs> when Baba comes, he'll give you one. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> there's a... <laughs> um, so what I was saying is, in this book, the Africans, again, there's no... These are Kikuyu guys, and it's written so well about an Indian. Yeah? The main character in this book for me it's Babu, he's an Indian. Mm. Then there's the secondary characters, he's also written about them very well. Yeah? Uh, uh, McDouglas, uh, McDonald, sorry. And McDonald and <laughs> Reverend Tanbu. And then on the third layer, that's where the Africans are. And not, I mean, you can't really find a main character. Perhaps it's because that's the way he wanted, but perhaps he was giving the story about the Indians and trying to integrate and how, what they went through, the problems they went through. Perhaps he didn't really want to tell the African story because I think the African story has also been told a lot. I don't know, you, you might know more books than me, but I don't know, is there somebody who's ever written from that point of view, like the Indians or the Mzungu's point of view, except for the books like the British, uh, you know, the, like the, 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 the Mau Mau ones, those ones are specifically... But I For our readers, we should tell them, this book is about the railway. It's yes. based on the railway, yes. not the recent SGR. Uh -uh. I found it very nice. That, the Lunatic that, that, Express. That, that this book came out last year, yeah. at the same time that the Lunatic Express died, yes. and the standard gauge railway, uh, you know... Took over, took sort over, of, yeah. Took over. Mm. So for the viewers, this book is set, uh, it starts in the 1890s, and it's about the building of the first railway, uh, done from Mombasa to Kisumu. Kisumu. Yes, and the main character in it, Babu, is an Indian, even comes over from India in the book. So this is why we are having this discussion. I'm saying, uh, you're saying a lot has been written about uh, the African context. Where are the Africans? they build the railway also. You do have a point. I think I know what you're talking about, that uh, the Africans who got involved have greatly been ignored. 
but it's because probably they were ignored even at that time. They were never really the main characters because, you know, there was the hierarchy, you know, Pale, Pale, Ivicini, you know, we go there, those, it's like they were always the et cetera's, which I guess is a bit sad. So, but uh, as a writer, and I'm sure you understand this, it's, it's kind of difficult to build a very low person when you're writing about a very huge thing, unless you're writing about like a, um, like a revolution, like there's a guy down there who started a revolution. I'm very that disturbed, makes maybe, answer. Yeah, you're saying a very low person. And we were what, low, what, they what, were put low. Yes, but why are you saying it's difficult to use them? Why not tell a story of when you're doing this with an African who's also building the railway? What is low about his story? What? Sorry, let, let it. I shouldn't be even categories in this uh, yes. discussion. Yes. I'm very excited about the fact that there are a lot of African authors, or authors of African descent started to use history, African history, as a subject, a topic of their uh, works. So historical African fiction is really coming up and there are exciting books about it. Um, and this is uh, The Dance of the Jacaranda is one. So where the African voice is um, being put in the center of it, where events, historical events, are being reimagined, but from the perspective of Africans, be it railway workers, be it market women, be it in uh, Dance of the Jacaranda, the elders, Nakaya elders, um, the butcher, Gathenji, these are all characters who have their own story and the Kenyans in this particular book who every, every Kenyan, even me, we know a Gathenji. We know one of those butchers who have a protruding belly, who have a very intimate relationship with their, with their customers. And I find it very interesting in that book. To me, this is a declaration of love to Kenya and Kenyans. Um, okay, Sh Shiko. Don't you find, she has said it's a declaration of love, mm. but, but so don't you find that this book is very aimed at being exactly that, like it's almost an exoticism, yeah? Like if you, like if you read it and, um, okay, you'll enjoy it as a Kenyan, but the way things are presented, like she's saying that it's a declaration of love to Kenya, isn't it like that giraffe at giraffe center that you, Richard Quest goes for breakfast, then he clicks his cheek, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. There's a lot of things that were ignored. Like, like a bit of postcarding. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I guess it was. But I'm, I'm just thinking, uh, I'm just trying to think from Kimani's uh, mindset when yes. he was writing the book. Yes. Because the book is also full of historical facts, yes. right? Um, and a lot of facts about what Africans went through were swept under the carpet. They were never recorded. So there was probably nothing tangible for him to work on? Am I, uh, am I making sense? Cause it's, You're saying it's, it's an extension of mm. sort of the racism of not having bothered to record the lower lives, lower in quotes. Yeah. But isn't the work of the author, and I'll ask this to Anja, isn't that the work of now the imagination? Because it's very well researched. Clearly the Mzungus had written a lot of their research. Mm -hmm. That's obvious. Mm. It's there. And the Indians also had their records, the Africans not so much, mm. because, you know, they're still being evangelized. Mm. Yeah. Uh, our, our people couldn't even write. So why not fill in that with imagination? You, you have all this research, but why also give it a sort of blank kind of... I think he's done a lot of imagination, though, mm -hmm. in that thing. Mm -hmm. I think there is a lot of imagination. And also... Um, I think he wanted, he was uh, more concerned about writing fiction on facts, based on facts available. The Africans were, were not available, like I said before. But, but I they were there as bodies. What do you mean they were not available? But they, And you're a creative writer. Yeah, but there's a lot of creativity yes. in that book, yes. though. Yes, no, no, I'm not saying there's not. Yeah. Um, my point is, mm. uh, a fellow from your region, just like me, Yuko Kisi, mm. I would find it, just as a writer, even if I'm researching all this, that you leave out a lot of, you don't tell any proper black story. They have told the story very well of the Indian, especially the Indian. Mm. If I didn't know this Peter Kimani's book, Honest not to God, I would think it's an Indian mm. and a very talented Indian. Mm. 
and I would say this is great. But um, and that's that. I think that's sort of my. But aren't you expecting too much from Peter? Like, uh, can't an African just write about a Muzungu or? Course, exactly. That's just always the thing. Mm -hmm. uh, African writers have to write exactly. African stories. No, they don't. They uh, don't have to do anything. Okay, that's they an have interest. to do uh, what they want. Yeah. They are, they are if artists. you wanted to write about mm -hmm. from the Indian's yeah. point of view, why okay. not? As long as the character or the story is believable. I think that is the only criteria that authors have to obey. Uh, but otherwise... So you don't think a very talented African uh, writer or author um, as any obligation, artistic obligation, to present, no. to present the African story. No, I don't think so. It's no. easier to write, okay. me as an African, I think it's easier yes. to write about Africa because I live an African life. So I have, yes. you know, uh, it may be hard for me to write Anya's story because I don't know the Muzungu side of living in Kenya, right? Mm -hmm. So I might not. I can do research. I can do, I can do research. Exactly. I can do research. <laughs> yeah. see, if I just want to write an easy one of like, ah, I know how to talk to very many people. Okay. Let me think about that story of somebody who went to the market in my village and all that. You know, it's easier. It's okay. e it's easier. Anna, let me ask you about. But I think when also. you talk to African authors, from what I have heard, they don't want to be boxed into being an African no. author. They they are authors, and they want to have the freedom like everybody else to express themselves in the way that they want and I think they deserve that like everybody else. So if they choose to write about African history, about African politics or whatever, we look forward to that. There was a lot of sort of a, a what can I say, interracial sort of a, um, relationships, yeah, uh, almost taboo lines like across and um answer what did you think about like uh, sally for example sally is always the lady she's sleeping with the uh, the black workers i found that very cliche sort of um, yeah. it's not bad it's like if, it, if you were americans you would say there's the lady of the house and there's the guy for the swimming pool i mean she remains quite colorless in the book she is not one of the main characters and she doesn't really play a big role yeah, it's this cliche, you're right. Um, I think maybe he put it in because it's a funny story, the description of how the husband finds the wife with the gardener of all people. Um, oh, it happens a lot. <laughs> okay, tell me more about it. So, uh, no, yeah, not from but, experience. Yeah, but um, I don't... You know, yeah. it's important because of course it changes his character. Sally, for me, yes. was uh, she, she might not have been spoken about a lot. She might not have been a main character. But I think she played a big role in in uh, forming Mac McDonald. Was, this, was that his name? Mm -hmm. yes. McDonald, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he's who he was be mainly because of he was either trying to impress her or swearing against him. And then we discover later all those things we discover. I don't want to give away the plot. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, it was a bit annoying when uh, to discover that she was sleeping with all these black people because she felt like she was paying back. Like, you know, she's paying back for all the atrocities with sex. That was a bit like, oh my God, that is so annoying. But I think she, I, I think she plays a very big role in that book, in shaping McDonald. Yeah, that's true, mm. an indirect one more. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. No, he became, I think he was a because horrible the, person from the white go, but yes. still, I think it went like a million degrees higher after <laughs> she did what she did. Yes. did. Do you think that's Sally's uh, story of uh, Egerton? Lord Egerton? Yes. I could uh, think. Yeah, I suspect mm. it, yeah. because uh, he, he does borrow. Yeah. Peter throughout this book borrows uh, quite a lot. Yeah. Um, like, he, he's even told the story of the, the, the Chinese workers yes. who are building the, is it the, the super highway. Yeah, here on Thika Road, we on Kiambu Road, yes? Yes, we are. Yes, Thika Road mm. is further off, mm. yes. But anyway, um, <laughs> that when the girls come around to look for Chinese and they look alike, mm -hmm. you told the same story, uh, you're like, uh, like with the Indians, that the Indians with the local girls, mm. and of course there are a lot of uh, uh, sort of like ramifications mm -hmm. to that, especially I think with the Maasai chief's daughter, and, and you know, and so on. So. That's an interesting sort of parallel 
of our super highway and Chinese situations. Mm, yes. And the Asians are back. And back then it was the Indians. Yeah, like a full circle, sort of, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. Full absolutely. Circle. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I find that very nice yeah. about uh, mm. sort of this, this book con construct for dance of, you know, dance of uh, the Jacaranda. Mm. Um, so many layers in it, yeah? Yes. Like what you said, that was against, uh, she was against the, the way uh, black people are treated, the slavery issue, mm -hmm. then comes in the union issue later on with, yes. then the last hundred pages are very political. Oh, they are very yes. political. Yeah, it feels true, like yeah. he's now mm. changing tunes, mm. kind of ten, uh, uh, hundred pages before the end. Yes. So I think it's, um, it's really a book that you are not getting tired of very easily while you read it. Oh, you're saying that uh, because things keep changing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, yes, yes. the twists are very subtle, yes. but yes. So, yeah. so they catch you by surprise. Actually, you're like, oh, that's where we were going with that. And you're like, I did think about that. Yes. I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. But that's what a good like, book needs. To yes. Be. Yeah. I'm not getting paid for mm. saying this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really like the yeah, book. Yeah, yeah. But you had Peter Kimani's uh, book launch. Yes, I was. The other day at yes. the Goethe Institute. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about that? About We're just jumping. Launch. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, how was the launch? Yeah, it was. Uh, there was a young man uh, of Indian descent who stood up and uh, thanked the author for writing this book mm. because now he finally also felt represented in yeah. literature yeah. in the Kenyan context. But there have been other authors who uh, 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 put Indians in Kenya in their oh. writing, Masanji, for example. Uh, the in-between world, uh, world of Vikram Lal. Yes, yes. It's uh, Kenyan history and uh, linked to the Indian population. So, yeah, um, he answered basically a lot of the questions that you are also asking us or that we are discussing. Shiko, so do you think efforts like this, because this is, a, like I said, a Kenyan guy, and his main characters, of course, are Indian, mm -hmm. even the main one, and even makes him out to be a bit of a hero with independence, mm. you know, uh, you know. So, do you think, and yet, in Kenya, it's still true that it was there 120 years ago in 1898, but it's still there today, that the Indian community seems always a bit separate, yeah? Do we integrate in terms of uh, commerce? Yeah. Yes. I was actually thinking yeah. about that when uh, when I was reading the book, and I'm thinking it must be really nice for the Indians because you know they've always been the sort of the ignored lot. We call them ignored. Why do you it's speak ignored. As, as if it's a victimhood? No, is no, it's it not a victimhood. Or, or is it that uh, I think we ignore sort of them? Separated. I don't think they're that separated. I think we just. I don't know whether it's even natural that we, they are ignored, in my opinion. Nobody really looks at them as a Kenya. It's just that ah, those ones are okay. If you talk about them, it's okay. If you don't talk about them, it's okay. But, you know, we, we are on contrast. Because, you know, like even in the book, the Indians are in between. So you got the white man up there, and then you got the black man even on the floors when they're put in the houses, yes. you know. So it's like this, the, the, yeah, the middle ground is sort of ignored. It's like, ah, those ones will be okay. So I, I think for me, it felt really nice to see somebody paying them that kind of attention. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Maybe I missed all the books that have done that, but uh, this is the first book I've read yes. with that kind of attention on the Indians. Yes. Mm. Um, and t talking about that, mm. um, of course, Peter put in the very well about how even when the railway is being built, the, the Europeans or the, the British rather would have safer spaces. Yeah, they would always construct safer spaces for the white engineers and so on. Then the Indians would sleep in the tents, and then the Africans would sleep okay. out yeah, there, so that when the lion comes, when the lions it's come, the African, the African is the Nyamachoma. Then for chili and curry, <laughs> they go for the Indian. So the, it's a very nice meal. Yeah. You have your nyamachoma, eh? yeah. the Africa, eh? yeah, yeah. And, and then, you know, the, the, the European is a sort of like a absolutely... Hard to find yes. as a lion. Just hard to find, mm. yeah. When the lion didn't think about mm. it, it has gotten its nyama and it's a, a sort of kachumbari. So, um, <laughs> Anja, you're allowed to laugh. Yeah. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah, don't try to be too politically correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was yeah. actually just so, wondering, yes. sorry to inter yes. interrupt. 
I know we've got all these things of the Indians who are mauled by the lions. Yes. Are there, are there stories of uh, Africans who were mauled by lions? Emma, did we somehow escape being meat? No, no, I, I don't because I'm hosting this, but mm. I, I do have a story called Grey Lions mm. in the Road to Eldoret book. Yeah, and it's about, uh, yeah, specifically so it's, about it's, Africans. It's, uh -huh. and so they, they were there. Uh, yes, and these are the, the, Patterson, the, pa the Patterson who's in this book uh -huh. is the same Colonel Patterson. Yeah. Uh, who's, uh, in, but this is a short story. Yeah. It's called Grey Lions. I need to find it. I'll yes. get it. I'll, yeah, but, I need um, to get it. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'll also this Colonel Patterson, of course he didn't go into the heroics. Yeah. Peter didn't go into the man-eaters mm. of, of, of Savo. Of Savo, yes. Yeah, because, I mean, he had another story to tell. Yeah. 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 Literally, yes, just yes. wrote it in passing. It was yes. just like a reference, yeah, very precisely. short reference. Yes, something right. seen from the tree. Yeah. 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 So what struck you about the Lunatic Express? Huh? So literary speaking, I enjoyed the writing, the description about the building of the railway, how it, and also the, um, the metaphor to call it a snake yes. that eats into, are, into yeah. the interior yeah. of the land and eats its eats people. And it was so well described, I felt I was there. You know, you know the railway was built, when it was built, uh, where it starts and where it ends. But what did it mean to be there, to be a worker, to be an administrator? Uh, how were people paid or not paid? How was the relationship between the workers of different races or colors? Uh, what uh, was the relationship to the people who lived across it? Did they just say, yes, please come and build that thing, that snake? Or did they resist? And, and according to the book, it resisted. So it's um, in, in textbook, history books, we just know, we just learn about facts, um, uh, dates, but we don't get, these are just bones. And this book gives us a flesh to yes. the bones, yes. which makes it an actual a figure. Yes, yeah. Yeah? <laughs> Something alive, it comes alive. Absolutely. Yeah, I really enjoyed that, yes. yeah. Um, I'll tell you, the, although that snake thing, which Peter uses in the book, it's famous from someone called Major Kitilili. Yes, yes. I mean, she's the one who said that the snake will come. Yeah, and they send her to Kisi. Uh, all those, yes. all the seers, all the figures. They used yes. to see the same things, actually, all these seers from different communities. Yes. You know, it's the story. only thing they could think of. Yeah. Because it looked like a snake. Yeah, it looked it's like a snake. But they, they all predicted it before it yes. came. You know, yes. butterflies and snakes, they all saw it before it happens. How amazing is that? Um, and I think yes, the yes. Uh -huh. amazing yes. thing is uh -huh. that those things, those seers who were discard, dis disregarded mm. by the missionaries or the administrators who wrote African history, and now they are there, mm -hmm. and they are given their, their proper space mm -hmm. in literature. Mm -hmm. Because this is now the only way they can be yeah. brought into That's people's nice. conscience and memory, yes. and uh, to see themselves there. I find that exciting. That's very true. And now let's talk about something that's very sort of um, going on right now. There's a big debate when you said African history. Right now, there are very powerful figures in this country. Yeah, This is a book. This is actually a history book. Yeah. This is Peter's book and beautifully, mm. beautifully written mm. history book. Well, literature is based on history. But Shiko, there are powerful forces in this country that are saying that it is time we stopped wasting our time with these things like history and sociology. Like we want to become like a very powerful uh, country and the only way to do that is to focus on sciences, technology, engineering. I, I miss that. Uh, um, it's a public I debate. This yeah. has been a public debate. Yeah, it's, it's a public that. debate. Yeah. 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 Let's just see it's among the most powerful officers in the land. Mm -hmm. Without yeah. naming names. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, the most powerful <laughs> office. And it's not been said once mm -hmm. from this source. It's, it's like almost an assault like it is, a, against yeah. history. And I find that very disturbing myself because mm -hmm. um, if you don't know who you are, what is, yes, yes, what is this uh, erasure that, that, that we are seeking? So before we go for uh, the break, yeah, I'll uh, ask you to... Please. Like I said, I haven't yes. had that. I don't know how I've missed it, of course. But that would be terrible, actually. That would be terrible. I think, first, you can't turn everybody into a scientist. You know, we, we'll always have the artists and the historians and everything. Plus, why are you trying to condition people to be 
this way. Why are you conditioning people? If I want to do science, like you said also, is if you don't have history, really, come on. I enjoy going down my family tree. And in our family, I must tell you, we had a seer. So I might be a seer. Yeah. Yeah. My, family, oh, my family tree ends at my grandfather. <laughs> so you're very lucky if they used we to. Do, I have one. Maybe they are the cave that they I'd used like to. it to be like five, ten branches down, yes. but you know, yes. it's only about You've got five. It to five. Yeah. I'm at sort of like three. Um, uh, Anja, mm -hmm. yeah, why do you think there's this attempt? Because I cannot imagine like in Germany, people saying, forget the history. Let's not focus on anything, mm. uh, you know, because here in Germany as a country has had its challenges, mm. you know, uh, uh, in, the, in the distant past. Mm. Yeah. Not to this, the last century, mm. you know, we had the Hitlers and fascists yeah. from which the country has grown and learned and become a very mm. more tolerant thing, you know, and uh, you can't compare Angel Merkel, like with Adolf Hitler, they're like, mm. yeah. So what do you think the damage is? Because Kenyans already, we don't have enough of our own stories. We don't have pride mm. too much. This way, we are so capitalistic, like I caterpillars. Think, I think it's a, in my opinion, short-sighted attempt to respond to youth unemployment, for example, to the complaint of the so-called market or market forces that um, the graduates of the universities don't have the right skills. Um, they need to be trained again before they can be given a certain responsibility in a job. But it, uh, as you say, it, le it leaves out the question that um, if you don't understand not only your history but the connections that certain developments in a, a nation, a continent or the world have, how things, um, how whatever Donald Trump does affect Kenyans, it might not be directly but it affects this country. Or climate change, yeah? Kenyans might not be the ones, or Africans might not be the ones who are the biggest culprits here, but they, they feel their effects. And to understand how things work together, you need social sciences, you need history, you need sociology, you need to understand. And so, that was our show today about Dance of the Jacaranda. We had so much more to say, but uh, we have run out of time, but the music goes on. Um, for me, this book is like a yay. If you want to discover, you know, a true lyrical book and a book of great history uh, by our friend Peter Kimani. So this is a book you definitely need to get. You need to buy it and get it for your relatives for Christmas. Uh, Shiko? Definitely a yay. Definitely. I concur. <laughs> okay, yes, and on that note, I concur, you sounded totally like a lawyer. I concur, and I that's it. I agree with you, Tony. Yes, thank you so much. Yeah. So, um, a fantastic uh, Monday to you. Have a great week, and make sure you read a book. And this book, the book you should read is Dance of the Jacaranda. Farewell. Mm -hmm.